and his historic pilgrimage to the Holy Land. He's just arrived in Bethlehem after a stop in Jordan. It's his first trip to the Mideast as pontiff, and ABC's chief foreign correspondent, Terry Moran, is traveling with him. Terry? Good morning, Martha. What a day it's been here. Part spiritual pilgrimage, part national celebration, and some political controversy as well. Pope Francis has said he wanted this trip to be strictly religious, but he pointedly said he was in the state of Palestine, a term Israel rejects and the U.S. does not recognize. In Bethlehem today, a profound moment of prayer. Pope Francis in the grotto where Christians believe Jesus was born. And in Manger Square earlier, Francis spoke of the Christ child and of the children in the world today, exploited, maltreated, enslaved, trafficked. In acknowledging this, he said, we feel shame before God who became a child. As he makes his journey here this morning, traveling in an open car through the Palestinian West Bank, Francis smiles his winning smile, enjoys himself. But this morning, a sorrowful and striking scene. The Pope prays at the grim separation barrier dividing Israelis and Palestinians. And there is anger in this Pope. We saw it yesterday in Jordan when he went off script, shook his fists and railed at those who are selling weapons to fuel the war in Syria. Criminals, he called them. God changed the hearts of those who plan wars. But can a pope, any pope, make change happen? Francis is the fourth pope to visit the Holy Land. This trip marks the 50th anniversary of Pope Paul VI's groundbreaking journey, a historic moment. Five decades later, still no peace. In the old city of Jerusalem, we spoke with Adan Dakar, a Palestinian shopkeeper. We had three popes coming before. I didn't think it, it brought any difference. I hope this one will bring, but to be honest with you, I doubt it. You're a bit of a pessimist. Well, at the age of 50, you know, living under occupation for so many years, I don't think anything has changed. Maybe it frustrates Francis. He comes and hugs the children and meets the political leaders and prays on the banks of the Jordan River. And the wars grind on and the refugees despair and the children suffer. Still, Pope Francis is determined to bear witness and to keep trying. In an extraordinary gesture, he's invited the Palestinian president, Mahmoud Abbas, and the Israeli president, Shimon Peres, to join him in the Vatican to pray for peace. And they've accepted. Martha? Thanks to Terry.